sitting backstage talking with Regis and Kermit. <laughs> Does it get better than that? I don't know. As Tom stated, it is an honor to be here with you today. I've been in this business a long time. I can tell you firsthand how inspiring it is to work alongside brilliant and talent. You'll see many examples of that today. It motivates everyone to think bigger and reach higher. I'm excited to introduce each of our new Disney legends and to share in the celebration of their enduring accomplishments. So let's get started. Our first five honorees have something in common that few can boast. Let's say they're all royalty. Disney princesses. <laughs> Apart from Regis and Kermit, it's a very good looking room back there. <laughs> Through the years, many beautiful, accomplished, and beloved ladies such as Adriana Casalotti, Eileen Woods, and Mary Costa have given voice to such unforgettable Disney screen heroines as Snow White, Cinderella, and Princess Aurora. All were honored as Disney legends for their now indelible screen portrayals that touched the hearts of generations around the world. This year, we move the clock forward to honor their more contemporary counterparts. Through song and story, these inspirational characters help to remind us to believe in our dreams and the steadfast power of faith, courage, and true love. As Cinderella herself taught us, a dream is a wish your heart makes. These talented, enchanting, inspiring ladies remind us that this beautiful and timeless truth can never be told too often. Our first Disney legend of 2011 might appear to be a younger member of the Disney family, but she's had a significant impact within the motion picture industry and is a presence on televisions worldwide. I am speaking of none other than Anika Nodi Rose. Tiana in the 2009 Disney hit The Princess and the Frog. Now in the film, Tiana is a girl with a passion and determination as she works and struggles to fulfill her dream of opening her own restaurant. And as the song says, it's almost there, owing to a bit of voodoo trickery. Soon, she is transformed into a frog and embarks with Prince Naveen, who has also undergone, as they say in the politically, politically correct term, an amphibious transformation on a hop-heavy hike through the bayou where they meet a menu of interesting characters and fall in love. Anika grew up in Bloomfield, Connecticut as a self-proclaimed... Well, yeah, you can the plot for Bloomfield, that's fine. <laughs> as a self-proclaimed Disney fan and from the beginning revealed the boxing, determination, and raw talent that made her such a perfect Tiana. She's been heard in both she knows a song from every Disney movie ever made. But it wasn't until her freshman year in high school that Anika was bitten by the acting club. She went on to earn a BA in theater from Florida A&M, then studied with the American Conservatory Theater. From her Tony Award-winning performance in Caroline, or a change to her role as Burrell Robinson alongside Beyonce Knowles and Jennifer Hudson in the feature film Dream Girls, the roles she's played have been as diverse as their media. Anika spent three months filmmaking in Africa for the HBO and BBC series, the number one ladies detective agency, for which, yes, for which she played the role of the dowdy, if you can imagine it, of a uh, yet dutiful Mama Grace Bakutsi. And Anika has been seen on television in The Starter Wife and The Good Wife, so she's got the wife shows already set. <laughs> she credits her training in theater for her ability to move from one medium to another. But I'll bet that training did not prepare her for the once-in-a-lifetime opportunity of being not only the voice of the first American princess, but for making history as Disney's first African-American princess. Today, Anika Nelly Rose becomes the youngest individual to ever receive a Disney Legends Award. Anika, something or not. I choose to say something. <laughs> I, um, the first thing I want to say is that I was so busy and 
you know, just running around lately. I want you to know I didn't realize until yesterday in the rehearsal that I was being honored, not Tiana. <laughs> Whether or not, you know, they want to know, Nika, if you would like to be a part of this. I didn't know that I was being honored. I thought Tiana was being honored, and I was here to stand in her place and represent her. I cannot tell you how honored I am to be here and to be a part of this. And my, I have to say thank you and, and give this honor to my grandmother who told me that I could be whatever I wanted to be, whatever that was. Thank my mom for telling me from the very beginning that I was part of Disney. She had me convinced I was a dancing mushroom. I just knew that I was part of the <laughs> And I want to thank my guys, Ron, John, Peter, and John Lasseter, who I don't think is here today, for believing in me and trusting in what I had to bring and not deciding that they needed some meteor to play the part but that I was good for them, and they believed that I could do it. I'm so pleased to be here. I thank all of you for taking part in this and for being supportive of me, and I am blessed and humbled beyond belief to stand here and hear the princesses that brought my young ears so much joy. Thank you. Captured my heart and imagination. 
with their wonderful story so many years ago. And I'll forever be grateful to them for believing in me and for fighting for me as their princess. I want to thank the Walt Disney Company for giving me the role of a lifetime and for honoring me for that role today. Very nice of them. Um, and I, I want to thank Rick Dempsey and all the team at Disney Character Voices for keeping Jasmine true to her original voice and spirit for every new generation of Disney fans. And I want to thank the fans. It's so great that you all turned out. Thank you so much. Faith, I gave him a call, and the rest is history. So, Albert, thank you, thank you so much. 
and to everybody that has worked on both Aladdin and Mulan, to the millions of little girls, including mine, sitting over there, that have that just continue to inspire princesses everywhere, and to all the fans, who many of whom are here, a lot of whom are here, who continue to show interest and and love for these beloved princesses, and. Really, that's all I wanted to say. So to the music department at Disney, thank you very much. And, and to everybody here this morning, especially to my family that have come from everywhere, thank you very much for this. This is such a great honor. such a sensible, clear-headed, and beloved character, such as Belle. Yeah. And you're ahead of me, I know, but yes, Paige O'Hara is star turned the role as a speaking and singing voice for the bright and beautiful heroine in Disney's 30th animated feature that was on endless loop when my daughters were young, beauty, <laughs> and peace, and we never minded it. I secured a place for her among a small group of Disney leading ladies. Paige's Broadway career began in 1983 when she landed the role of Ellie Mae Chipley in the revival of the musical theater classic Showboat. And though she went on to play Ellie Mae Chipley in several other productions of Showboat, one for the Cairo Opera House in Egypt, it was an entirely different role that proved to be a match made in heaven, or at least in the hands of Disney animators. It's worth noting that in 1991, Beauty and the Beast became the first film ever to earn a nomination, a first animated film, to win a nomination uh, for Best Picture. It won an Academy Award for Best Score, which was composed by Disney legends Alan Menken and Howard Ashman, and the title song, and the title song Beauty and the Beast won the Academy Award for Best Song. Paige continues to be the heart and soul of Belle by voicing the admired and self-educated princess in her direct video sequel such as Beauty and the Beast, The Enchanted Christmas, and Belle's Magical World. Being a Disney princess might seem like a glamorous job, but I know Paige and the other Disney princesses being honored today can attest to the fact they are some of the hardest working voice talent in the industry. But at the end of the day, Paige says, playing Belle has been a dream come true. Paige, as the voice of Belle, can be heard in toys and interactive books, on internet games, video games, sing-along CDs, in Disney theme parks, and I'm hoping she'll do a ringtone for me. <laughs> as well multicast. You'll also want to catch her fun cameo as the spicy soap star Angela in Disney's hit feature film fantasy, Enchanted. Today, we thank you, Paige, for bringing Belle to life in a way that has inspired many others to dream of adventure beyond the boundaries of their own provincial life and to believe that even the heart of a beast can change. Paige, please join me to accept your Disney Oh, oh wow, I'm so overwhelmed. <laughs> thank you so much. I first have to thank my family and friends for being here tonight. That means everything to me. And Thank my mom, who's in heaven, who used to sing and dance around the living room with me. We'd sing to Judy Garland and Julie Andrews. <laughs> she inspired me and let me watch Mary Poppins over a hundred times. <laughs> I'm not much of a writer, so uh, that's why I became an actress. <laughs> so they could give me words to say, and I called on my husband, Michael, to help me jot down a few of my thoughts, because he knew I'd be nervous. And I think it's important that I make it very clear that I am just a very small part of the family that made Belle who she is. There are so many people who made all of this possible. The vision of Don Hahn, the music and lyrics of Alan Menken and Howard Ashman. The book of Linda Wolverton, 
Our directors, Kirk Wise and Gary Trisdale, and Bell's animators, Mark Henn and James Baxter. <laughs> and of course, he couldn't be here tonight, but I talked to him this week. My dear leading man, my heart, Robbie Benson. <laughs> I also want to thank all of the people that work so tirelessly behind the scenes, like Howard Green, and all these years, Disney character voices. Thank you. <laughs> you know, I have to be honest, there's one thing that I really don't like about Belle. She never gets older. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's, it's weird that old girl can show up at a Disney event. And all I have to do is say a few lines of bells and a couple of notes, and all of a sudden I have all these children around me, and they're saying, Belle, did you bring your ball gown? Where's the beast? Now that's Disney magic. <laughs> it doesn't get any better than that. But most of all, I don't need my script for this. Most of all, it's all about the fans. <laughs> would happen. None of us would be here. I want to thank you for all your love and support over all these good years and you know I've had a few tough ones too with losing some family. And your letters and your email have meant so much to me. Thank you to all of you. Thank you to Walt Disney. I love you all. God bless. Discover anew the mermaid princess who longed to 
to be human. It is my honor to invite Jody Benson to the stage to accept her. Okay, here we go. This is surreal. Absolutely surreal. 11 o'clock in the morning, I'm in a ball gown. What can we do? <laughs> Praise God from whom all blessings flow that I'm standing here today. I'm a proud cast member of our Disney. years old, it does not swipe anymore. I couldn't get my discount yesterday. <laughs> I'm very, very proud of this card. I'm very proud of our company with Disney Pixar. It is my family. Bear with me, folks. 25 years gives you the opportunity to have to thank the people that make it possible to be here. Eight films, seven voices, three television series. I'm blessed beyond belief, and it's because of all of you guys out there that I can be here today. My husband, Ray, 27 years of marriage, who's put up with me, is my best friend. My best friend, thank you for hanging in there with me from beginning, middle, till now. Our precious children, McKinley and Delaney, who bring me so much joy every single day. They're my angels here on earth, and I love them both, and they're so unbelievable. I enjoy them tremendously, my mom and my family, who cannot be here with me today. But I do have my dear friends here with me today, and I thank them, the Gavins, the Fries, the Holmes, the Martsoffs, Marsha Hurwitz, Dana Rigney. I love you guys. Howard Green. What can I say? My dear friend, Roy Disney, I miss you terribly. And you need to be here with me today, because that's why I'm here. Of course, <laughs> the amazing Howard Ashman, the brilliant Howard Ashman, the unbelievable Howard Ashman. Every single thing about Ariel is Howard handed it to me on a silver platter, and for him, I am grateful. Alan. Ron and John, our entire team. Glenn Keane, my animator and my dear friend. The world's greatest living animator to date. And if it weren't for he and Linda, I would not be alive today, literally. They took me in after the Little Mermaid came out. My life was falling apart. Very grateful to Glenn and Linda, to all my team of friends here. DCB. <laughs> Disney character voices who have stood next to me for the last 25 years. Rick Dempsey, Vicki, Brian, Ben, Renee, Vanessa. You're my family. I love you guys and I appreciate how you believe in me and you never give up. And I love my job. Gosh, I love my job. Thank you. The directors and the producers of the feature film television department, past and present, that I've had the opportunity to work with on these films. Disney Cruise Line, love you guys. It's been an amazing journey. I know that I have left out names, but they know in my heart, oh, Chris Montan, the whole team, see, there they go. But I want you guys to know something, D23ers and Disney enthusiasts, like Walt, who I did not have the honor to meet, the, the privilege of getting to meet him. My heart is with this company. My heart is with Disney Pixar. John Lasseter, gosh, thank you so much for opening up and looking beyond Ariel that I could do some other characters with you guys. I love Barbie, I love Lady, I love Ariel, I love my girls. <laughs> I love my job. But I just want you guys to know that this matters to me. This really matters to me. 
when I stand on the stage and I sing and I go in the studio and I hang out with you guys, it, this is just not a job. This is a gift that God has given me. It's my ministry. And it's the way I get to love on people. And John 15, 5 is my life verse. I'm the vine, you are the branches. If a man remains in me and I am him, he will bear much fruit. But apart from me, you can do nothing. I can do nothing without my God. And I cannot do anything without